we already have infrastructure in place to support a digital economy. And an immense amount of digital activity is already happening here. This means that businesses today have all the tools they need to participate effectively in the digital economy at the higher end of the value chain here in Singapore. But many companies lack awareness of the possibilities. In particular with data science, companies cite a lack of good data, a lack of awareness, a lack of expertise, and some concerns about regulatory clarity. Mr. Zaki's question on how we can drive quicker adoption of technology such as data analyt analytics is extremely relevant. IMDA will establish a Data Innovation Program Office, DIPO, to lead in this effort. The DIPO will address industry concerns by facilitating data-driven innovation projects and the development of the data ecosystem in Singapore. One of the ways DIPO will do this is to introduce a data sandbox. This will provide a neutral and trusted platform for companies to share data securely without threatening the individual company's interests. The data sandbox will also provide data analytics tools to help companies build expertise in data science. To encourage the co-creation of solutions using data by citizens and businesses, GovTech has been actively improving data.gov.sg, focusing on quality instead only of quantity of data. For example, a developer's portal was introduced last year to provide data users and developers easier access to real-time data via APIs. DIPO will also work with government agencies to release more economically useful data through data.gov.sg. I encourage members to investigate that URL as well, data.gov.sg. Central to this all and all of our efforts is the trust that citizens have about the use of their data. I thank Dr. Tio Ho Pin and Mr. Saktiandi Supat for their questions on data protection. As companies innovate with data, we also want to make sure they know how they may use personal data in accordance with regulations. This is increasingly important with the rising use of smartphone apps and e-commerce websites. The personal, protection, sorry, I beg your pardon. the personal Data Protection Act, the PDPA, has been implemented for over two years now. We have seen greater awareness among organizations of the need to protect the personal data in their possession. The Personal Data Protection Commission, the PDPC, will be actively reviewing the Act in light of the lessons learned over the past two years and the needs of industry today. The PDPC is committed to improving the data protection ecosystem and will put in place additional measures to ensure businesses know how they may use personal data responsibly. The PDPC will develop data protection starter kits to help SMEs kickstart their data protection practices within their companies, engage SMEs through the trade association and chambers and sector specific forums, and provide more affirmative guidance to give certainty and clarity on what is permissible. It is important, Madam, that everyone has a chance to participate in the digital age. I thank Ms. Sun Shui Ling, Mr. Chen Xiaomao, and Mr. Daryl David for their comments and suggestions. We are committed to making it easier to access government digital services. Currently, we have trained staff at 27 Citizen Connect centers island-wide to assist less tech-savvy users in accessing government digital services. At these Citizen Connect centers, you can perform many government digital services, such as requesting for your CPF statement, applying or renewing HDB or URA season parking tickets, online registration for SingPass, and more. It's important that we enable our seniors to keep up with these ch with, with this changes and hopefully become IT independent. One way we're doing so is through the intergenerational IT boot camps and the Silver IT Fest mass workshops. Through these, IMDA has been collaborating with primary to tertiary level schools to provide opportunities for the younger and older generations to come together and learn about information technology. Seniors can also learn inf about information technology at any of the 29 Silver Infocom Junctions and People's Association Senior Academy Centers available island-wide, where affordable and customized IT classes are available. IMDA will continue collaborations with schools and organizations and regularly review the curriculum to ensure seniors are equipped with applicable skills such as using social media apps and accessing government digital services. Interested youth who can sign up to be friends of the Silver Infocom volunteers to help seniors at such events and uh, participate in the Silver IT Fest classes as well. 
Given our libraries enjoy a wide reach among our citizens, they can also play a bigger role in the future in assisting citizens with government digital services. There are other ways to support more families in benefiting from connectivity. IMDA already has a variety of programs in place. We are expanding the Home Access Program, which provides low-income households with low-cost broadband connectivity at home and a tablet to benefit a further 16,000 households in addition to the existing 8,000 households on the current program. We also partner private sector organizations in these efforts, such as POSB, NTUC Fair Price Foundation, and Netlink Trust. I hope between these types of out outreach efforts and the examples provided by some of the members about volunteerism for the young, I hope more organizations and more youth volunteers will step forward and come on board to work with us to make sure that everybody in Singapore has an opportunity to participate in the, op in the digital age.